Lin is an ordinary young guy living in a bustling city, with no family or friends to look after him. He lives in a small apartment by himself and only has his big dreams to keep him going. He hopes to someday become a cultivator, which is a magician in his world. On the midnight of his 18th birthday, he celebrates his coming of age with cake, offering a slice to his dead mother's shrine. While eating, he tells her that since he is an adult now, he will enroll in a great sex soon so that he can work towards becoming a cultivator. However, his moment is interrupted by a knock at the main door. It is followed by a spooky voice of an old man asking anybody inside the house to open the door. His TV set distorts and starts broadcasting how a mysterious being comes to abduct promising young men at the stroke of midnight. His phone's display also distorts like a hologram, and Lin frantically takes out an evil warding spell to protect himself and busts out the secret special power he was born with called Spiritual Eyes. It is basically X-ray vision that can detect spiritual energy. Upon dialing up the Spiritual Affairs Bureau, which I guess is Magic Police, the mysterious man busts the main door open. Blinding green light bursts through and hits in Lin's face. The intruder is an old man with a long, gray beard and hair completely surrounded by a yellow glow. He tells Lin Lin that he's been waiting for him very long and teleports them both away from Lin's house. When Lin opens his eyes, he sees them floating in an endless mystical land. The man explains that they are at the boundary between the mortal and spiritual worlds. The man then casts a spell that releases a giant red orb that gets absorbed into Lin. He starts hearing a robotic voice in his head that scans his body. After determining that he is suitable for what is to come next, a screen with a loading screen appears in front of him. It quickly reaches 100% and the voice says that the War God system has successfully fused and installed within him. The old man doesn't offer any explanation for what just happened. He simply hands in Lin a letter of recommendation that will allow him to enter Juzhou Top Magic Academy in the spiritual world and train as a cultivator. It's like all his wishes have been given to him on a silver platter. Maybe it's a birthday miracle. And Lin gladly accepts without asking any questions which the old man is relieved about. He leaves Lin, Lin behind in a hurry while laughing about his new freedom, making him wonder if he got scammed somehow. He doesn't care much though because he's in the spirit world. A small floating ball with wings comes out of his pocket. It speaks in the same robotic voice that he heard earlier. It introduces itself as the system's spirit. The system is essentially a cheat that will let and Lin easily adapt and peek in the spiritual world. The spirit is only visible to him and he must be careful about how he uses it in front of others to avoid suspicion. A large ball emerges in front of them that looks like a glitch in a game. The spirit explains that a cultivator has become stuck in the teleportation channel because the channel failed due to an energy surplus. It guides and lends so that he can absorb the extra energy, repairing the channel. Eventually, a beautiful girl emerges from the channel and crashes into an Lin. The girl quickly helps him up and thanks him for saving her. The spirit detects when they make physical contact and helps him boost his appearance by giving him a glow-up. It works. The girl introduces herself as Xilin from the Vermilion Bird Sect. She's surprised to hear that he is from the mortal world without any affiliation to his sect and asks how he got into the school. He shows her the scroll of the recommendation letter. Seeming to understand, she shakes his hand and says that she looks forward to being in the same class as him. When he asks how she knows they will be in the same class, she just giggles and says she just knows. The two walk into the grand school together while she runs through the history of the prestigious school. Juzo Top Magic Academy was the first land of cultivation established by the Heavenly Alliance and is a floating island in the sky that is as big as a continent. They go to where all the other students have gathered. The first test is to touch the lustrous Divin Minolti, the only energy source and flagship treasure of the island. The monolith detects the person's strength and cultivation base according to which it assigns them a level and class. All 10,000 students undergo the test to be divided into 100 classes, with class 1 having the students with the highest potential in cultivation. This batch of students seems promising with many students entering class 1. Among them, Suan Yuan Cheng, the leader of Thousand Spirit Sect, stands out because he presents a letter of recommendation from a true god, which is a sign of a genius. All the students immediately get hyped over him. Sure enough, when he touches the monolith, he gets the upper initial stage in spiritual nurturing level and a seat in class 1. After Cheng, Solon's turn comes. Upon touching the monolith, she gets the upper ninth stage and also gets into class one. She walks toward and Lin and says she'll be waiting for him in class one. The other male students notice and become jealous of N for getting all the attention from her. N's turn finally comes, despite all the doubts, he takes up a confident posture and presents his letter of recommendation. Everybody goes berserk over seeing two students with recommendation letters in one batch. His letter is from Master Lu, the legendary master who attained immortality above true gods. This causes everyone to have very high expectations when it walks up to the monolith, 
with the crowd even chanting his name. However, when Un touches the monolith, only a small ripple comes out and his rank is put for everyone to see. Somehow, for the first time in 100,000 years, he is the first student to get into class 1 with zero level. The student that goes next gets into class 100, the bottommost class, despite having a higher level. Everyone gets infuriated, suspecting he must have pulled some strings. The whole school turns on him in one second. One of the students in class 1 asks to challenge Un Lin. The spirit detecting the challenger to be way above En's league advises him to run. Xiao Lin is way ahead of him, grabs his hand, and flies them away from danger and into his dorm. Later that night, and takes a good look at the system. He tries to figure out how to repair his reputation at the school. The spirit gives him easy walkthroughs of how to level up. He levels up to the third stage by simply doing 10 push-ups, 20 push-ups, and 100 push-ups consecutively. With each stage, he notices a big improvement in his physical strength. However, he hits a brick wall at the fourth stage, which requires 10 billion push-ups. He realizes that he has to start finding other ways to level up. He takes a break and leaves his room for a walk outside. Almost as soon as he leaves the room, he gets attacked by a masked man from the back. Thankfully, he hears the attacker and dodges his punch. He activates his spiritual eyes and sees that the attacker is in the third stage, just like him. With his newfound agility and strength, and Lin tries to take the attacker down but neither gains an advantage over the other. The attacker's mask comes off during the fight, revealing that he is Liu Dabao, the one who was sorted into class 100 right after N. Salty about being upstaged by him, Liu has come to get rid of the entire school's hatred and Lin, pissed that it has already reached the third stage within a single day, Liu casts a golden talisman. The spirit tells and that he can neither block nor run away from this attack. The only solution is to melt the talisman and release its energy neutrally using Heavenly Gateway, without knowing how to do so, and just stands at the same spot while the talisman flies toward him. But its course is interrupted by an avalanche of rubble falling over it. Sagalin comes to the rescue with a sword to the surprise Liu's neck, demanding him to stay back. However, Liu is able to distract them and tries to land a magic punch on Xiolin and notices at the last moment and blocks the punch, absorbing the energy with Heavenly Gateway, just as his spirit had advised him. Xiaolin slashes with her sword, but Liu runs away from the scene, with the immediate threat gone and collapses on the ground after draining all his energy into cultivating the Heavenly Gateway. He's still happy though, because the fight allowed him to get closer to reaching the fourth stage. Nilin and Xiaolin attend their first class together. The other two letter of recommendation students in the batch, Princess Su Chanian of the Kimu royal family and Xuang Yin Cheng, get a grand entrance as the whole class admires them like royalty. Both are already at the spiritual nurturing level, proof of their genius. Suddenly, a floating tree at the center of the stage starts speaking. He introduces himself as the cultivator Kang King, their teacher for the practical cultivation class. The teacher is busy with other commitments and so has sent a projection to relay his teachings, sort of like a magical Zoom call. And Lin, expecting to learn his first lesson, is shocked when everybody, including the tree, goes silent. With his spiritual eyes, he realizes that all his classmates have entered some sort of meditation. Haxido Lin explains that the cultivation realm can only be sense and cannot be spoken in words, and that she'll give him extra lessons to understand how to do it. Disappointed, and waits for the next class to begin. Even the teacher of the swordsmanship class is not present and talks with a talking sword and misses out on the teachings again and as he cannot enter the meditative state. He starts to lose hope as class after class goes the same way. However, hope is restored when a live teacher, Elder Yuin, walks into the class to teach the mortal class. She assigns in Lin as the class representative for the mortal class due to his experience living in the mortal world, making him eagerly look forward to the lessons. He is again quickly disappointed when the teacher hands a phone to each student, sits back and makes them use the phone however they want for an hour. He tries to object, suggesting different things they can learn about the mortal world, but the teacher quickly shuts him down, telling him this class is like their physical education class and nothing more. For the first time in his life, and is upset over not learning anything in school. In Lin doesn't wake up until then, next class has started. Xiaolin explains that this is the magical class and teacher Yuing intends to hold a magic sparring session. The teacher picks Cheng and In Lin as the first pair. Xiaolin asks to spar Cheng instead, considering the large power gap between him and Anne. Despite the teacher declining, Xiaolin stops him from fighting him by making the first move. She charges him with a handful of flames, but Cheng puts it out with the force of wind. She tries hitting him from every angle, but he effortlessly counters her without moving from his spot. She goes up in the air and flies back toward him as a phoenix, but Cheng fends her off with a powerful force field using the Absolute Spirit Formation spell. At this moment, the spirit tells and that he can analyze his formation with his spiritual eyes. Upon doing so, he notices a single weak spot in the force field. 
Xiolin continues to attack but can't make a dent in his defense. Cheg decides to end the fight by using his first offensive move, and bravely runs into the scene, pushes Xiolin away and uses Heavenly Gateway to absorb the energy from the attack. A massive dust cloud emerges on impact and people are surprised to see N who is merely in the third stage, still standing after taking the hit, and follows it up by throwing a spell toward Cheng, but he easily dodges it. Cheng tries to wrap things up by tying the two in chains, but the chains break, shocked. Cheng looks back to see that N Lin was actually aiming for the fault in his formation and hence, broke it. After breaking through the chains, and Lin levels up to the fourth stage, making him go from zero to four in the span of a day. Cheng forfeits and hands in the victory. The spirit tells and he will require 130 spiritual stones to level up to the seventh stage. After class, Cheng approaches him and Xiolin as an effort to become friends, saying that if they ever require any help with their cultivation, they can come to him for help. And wastes no time to ask for the 130 spiritual stones he needs to level up, and an embarrassed Xiolin tells him that spiritual stones are the currency in the spiritual world, and that he is asking Cheng for money. He tries to apologize, but Cheng hands him a ring worth 5,000 spiritual stones to take care of his needs. Before leaving, the two exchange gaming IDs, and Cheng invites him to come play and watch movies with him in his room soon. Video games are the quickest way to a gamer's heart. Princess Su also approaches them to make friendly conversation, and asks and for extra lessons to understand the mortal world. Back in his dorm, the system notifies him of the upcoming Battle for Freedom, an annual battle royal competition held by the school that is mandatory for all students to participate in. The system gives him his first special quest, in which he has to rank in the top 50 at the Battle for Freedom. If he succeeds, he gets a prize from the system that can be anything from special weapons to magic tools. But if he loses, he will be transformed into a girl for a whole year. Haunted by the thought of becoming a girl, he intensively studies the background of the battle to prepare himself. The system shows him a map of the Thousand Peaks Forest, where the competition takes place for three days and all 50,000 students from across all five years of the academy participate. With his newly obtained seventh stage and checks his projected rank and is horrified to find himself close to 30,000th. He begs the spirit for more ways to level up. It recommends obtaining an Essence of Mountain to unlock the seventh stage's powerful special skill. Mountain Quaking Fist and winning a duel against an opponent at the ninth stage or higher to level up to the 8th stage. Doing both will help him jump from his 30,000th rank to 4653. He asks Bro Chang to intentionally lose to him in a fight so he can level up, but Chang refuses, saying he should strengthen himself using honorable practices. Bro, he asks Kyolin for help with obtaining the essence of Mountain, but is too embarrassed to ask her to lose to him in a fight and chickens out at the last moment. With Cheng hyping him up, he tries asking again the next time they meet, but drags it out and speaks in vague terms, causing him to believe he's hinting at confessing his feelings to her, blushing, and agrees to let him do a sneak attack on her when he wants. A few days later, they meet up so she can give him the promised essence of mountain. She gets very nervous, expecting him to reveal his true feelings for her, but instead, and launches a surprise attack at her using spells Cheng taught him. Xiaolin starts tearing up when she realizes she misunderstood him, with her arms bound up in chains and loses the drive to follow through on his attack upon seeing her cry and loosens the chains. She throws the bag with the essence at him and runs away, crying and calling him a jerk, and dies inside with guilt and returns to the dorm with the bag. In it, he finds not only the essence, but also a notebook with handwritten notes about all the previous year's battle of freedom top rankers, stats, and powers for him to prepare from. He reads through it while feeding on some of the essence. The last page has a small note from her that says he should use the location spell to find her in the battle so that she can protect him. Feeling super bad about making her cry, he decides to go apologize to her right away, but is stopped in his tracks by the worst stomach ache ever. The spirit explains that the essence is taking effect on his body and must be detoxified from his body. Since then, and is unable to leave his room for days due to a severe case of diarrhea, Xiolin waits for him day and night for an apology but is left disappointed. He misses class too, making the students think he is taking things too lightly, further decreasing his popularity. At this rate, it looks like he won't be well enough to participate in the battle for freedom. Cheng comes to check on him, but he can't get up to open the main door. After explaining his illness, his bro Cheng comes through with a heart sutra spell that rapidly clears the inner demons out of his body. He works at it the whole evening and night over multiple days to help him get back on his feet. With only 8 hours remaining before the competition, it makes a 97% recovery. So close yet so far, all 50,000 students gather at the monolith at the time of the Battle of Freedom. The eldest elder, Yuwa, makes an appearance to address them. He explains that the teachers will score the students based on their battle strength and total contribution during the three-day period, 
which will determine their rank in the battle. He has cast a golden light on all the students to protect them from grave injury and death. If it breaks, the students are eliminated from the arena. At the end of the opening ceremony, the students are teleported to the Thousand Peaks Forest. Chang and Princess Su eliminate multiple students with ease, with no suitable challenger in sight. Xiaolin climbs up a tree to temporarily hide while tracking his movements. She is still upset over and not apologizing to her and refuses to go look for him if he doesn't. Meanwhile, as the most hated and sought-after student, and Lin hides in the bushes to detoxify the last remaining 3%, but is interrupted by an 8th stage student. Now visible, he attracts 4 more ninth stage students like a magnet, and buys time by manipulating them into fighting each other. He finally fully recovers and unlocks the powerful Mountain Quaking Fist skill, which he uses to single-handedly eliminate the students. By defeating the four ninth stage students, he levels up to the eighth stage and gains a ton of battle strength points. However, the spirit points out that 11 hours have passed since the battle started and he has only defeated four opponents, making it impossible for him to reach the top 50 without upgrading his skills. The spirit offers him a few upgrade quests, but before he can do any of them, Liu from class 100 approaches him. He asks him to follow him and takes him to the secret layout where all 291 students of class 100 have been holed up to protect themselves from a brutal elimination. Knowing victory is impossible, they ask him to gently eliminate them because he is different from the others in class 1. He does not bully the weak because he, too, has a heart of the weak, and gladly accepts and eliminates them to rapidly rise up the ranks to 7864, and takes a break to think of new plans to increase his rank. The spirit interrupts him by saying a spiritual nurturing level cultivator is very close. Right then, a voice from the back declares himself as a year 4 spiritual nurturing level student and challenges and Lin to fight. The shining soldier-like opponent speeds toward him, but is taken down within seconds by an ultimate flash spell cast by another spiritual nurturing level student. And Lin recognizes him from Solon's notes. She is Lu Kan Huan, a year 3 student who ranks second in the previous year's battle and was also a letter of recommendation holder. She also has a cute nickname. It's the number one god of killing. Getting ready to have his butt kicked and waits for her to attack. Instead, she asks him to play a game with him. She says that she wants to play games with guys from the mortal realm to look for the right guy for her. The game's rules are that she asks him 100 questions about the mortal world and and has to answer them all correctly within a time limit to avoid getting eliminated. The two end up having a lot of fun over the game and and successfully completes it. Happy to be alive, he starts walking away from her. She stops him and says she wants to play another game. When he asks her how long she wants to play, she says she wants to play till the end of the battle, and panics because playing throughout would not let him progress further up the ranks, and he'll ultimately get transformed into a girl. He quickly reviews the upgrade quests and realizes that one of them is getting on top of Black Mountain Peak and unlocking a skill there. Although it would be inaccessible to him, they can fly up to the summit with her spiritual nurturing level skills. He persuades her to go up the peak with him, so that they can play games in peace until the battle ends. Meanwhile, Xiaolin is baffled to see and speed up toward the peak through her tracking device. She guesses that a spiritual nurturing level student, let's call them SNL students, has abducted him. She debates if she should follow him when a large dog bounds toward her. He says he is Debe, part of the Divine Beast sect, and is also interested in Enlin. Before the battle, they had talked and had told the dog how he was too sick to fight. Xiaolin realizes that he had not come to her to apologize yet because he was too ill to, and forgives him. She and the dog team up to look for En but are ambushed by another student from Class 1 Wei Ji. Seeing his fighting style, Xiaolin realizes that it was, in fact, him who had attacked En on his first day and not Liu. She asks him why he targets En Lin, and he says that the mortal and spiritual worlds should not mix because it will lead to the spiritual world's downfall. He advises her to distance herself from En Lin immediately. Xiaolin replies with her sword with Debai as backup. Soon, a signal from his sect, the Divine Alliance, shoots up in the sky, signaling their arrival. Xiaolin and Debai retreat to avoid being outnumbered. Over at Black Mountain Peak, Lu and Enlin arrive on her magic wand. The spirit tells Enlin that being on the peak for a day will give him the energy to cultivate Earth Lotus Divine Art skill, giving him power equivalent to SNL. It advises him to ambush Lu upon cultivating this skill and take the chance to escape. Enn's thoughts are interrupted by a black-haired guy who was already there when they arrived, sitting by a tree. He gets up and says he was waiting for Enlin's arrival, although he wasn't sure who he was. Now that he's seen his face, he knows who to look for next time. He then walks away and disappears into thin air. Enlin asks Lu who the guy was, but she hasn't seen anybody since they arrived at the peak. She brushes him off, and the two start playing League of Legends on their phones. They play the whole night, and she keeps losing. Frustrated, she pulls out her laptop claiming to update the game and expertly types up a bunch of code. 
When they start playing again and cannot defeat her because she installed a bunch of hacks to make her invincible. Laughing, she reveals her ambitions of eventually retiring from cultivating and entering the mortal world to set up a gaming company. With her as the CEO, she will hire him as the manager. They promise each other this future with a high five. They watch the sunrise together. The spirit notifies and that he has unlocked the Earth Lotus divine art and should prepare for ambush. And chooses to ignore the spirit. Lu asks and Lin if they're friends and when and says yes, she says he is her first friend. You see, people in the spiritual world only see her rank and power, reducing her from a person to a cultivation tool. And Lin gives a motivational speech about how they should work together to change how the spiritual society works by forming their own sect. However, Lu accuses him of having lied the whole time they've been on the peak. Apparently, she can detect when a person is saying the truth through their aura, and his aura has been murky since they came to the peak. The spirit clarifies that she is confusing the aura from him for absorbing the peak's earth energy as him lying. She asks him what his true intention is. The spirit stops the absorption process so that she can detect him saying the truth when he answers that he was planning to attack her. Feeling betrayed by her first friend, she attacks him with ultimate flash. He starts charging up his new skill while trying to explain he was being sincere the whole time. Feeling remorse, Lu stops her spell, but the spirit urges him to attack regardless and causes him to release Earth Lotus Divin Art on her without his control. The spell flings her back, but she quickly recovers and deflects his spell. He is pushed back against a tree and has her sword to his neck, and promises he didn't intend to hit her and that he has been honest with her the whole time. Lu detects he's saying the truth and demands to know how he cultivated such a strong skill while just playing games. He reveals his secret for the first time since coming to the spiritual world. He explains that he has a software on his body that basically lets him cheat his way through leveling up. Seeing his clean aura, Lu finally trusts him and gives him her headband before letting him go. The headband will protect him from any SNL attack. And Lin and the spirit speed down the peak with 47 hours and 20,000 participants left in the battle of freedom. On his way down, he comes across Wang Zhuanzhen, the previous year's top ranker. Wang doesn't notice in hiding, though. He makes a big scene, demanding someone named Chen Chen show himself to settle a four-year-old fight. If he doesn't come by the time he sounds ten thunderclaps, he will strike down all the remaining students in one go. At the same time, his tracking device goes off, signaling that Xiaolin is in trouble. All this time, Xin Debai have been followed by the Divine Alliance members. They fight till the end, but eventually start getting worn down by the large number of opponents. And Lin makes it just in time to save Xiaolin from one of Wei's attacks and casts his Earth Lotus Divine Art on the three of them to protect them from Wang's all-out attack that eliminates all the other students. Strengthened by Lu's headband, they are successfully protected from the attack, but the headband breaks, having reached its limit. Only 132 students survive the attack, including Wei Ji and some of his goons, and Lin eliminates them all and finally reaches the ninth level. Chen Chen still doesn't come up to Wang. He continues threatening to destroy the forest if he doesn't show up. On his final count, Princess Su throws her magic weapon at him to stop him. Cheng chains him up while he's distracted with his go-to absolute divine spirit skill. Despite their united efforts, Wang has the upper hand, and the two are eliminated. The backlash from the final attack sends waves of energy that eliminate almost everyone from the arena. And Lin prepares to protect his group with all of his strength, but the same mysterious man from the Black Stone Peak appears and blocks the wave with a single finger. Turns out the guy was Chen Chen all along. He disappears as soon as he deflects Wang's attack with his heaven-splitting finger skill. With only four students left in the arena, and having eliminated too few students, the spirit tells and he only has a 0-1 chance of being among the top 50. The little chance he has is only if he defeats Wang. Determined to complete his quest and not become a girl, he deliberately eliminates Xiaolin and Debei to face Wang alone. He draws Wang to him by claiming Chen Chen is here, when he arrives and challenges Wang to a fight. Wang unleashes an ultra-powerful spell that and tries to counter with his Earth Lotus Divine Art skill. Wang's spell easily penetrates through his counter, and then gets ready for defeat. However, the system reveals he has unlocked the Heaven-Splitting Finger skill. He uses it immediately to try and block Wang's spell. Wang gets eliminated, and then successfully gains the second rank. However, he loses consciousness right after the fight due to overconsumption of energy, and doesn't wake up until 10 days later. As a result of the Battle of Freedom, the school gives him a bunch of stuff like spiritual stones, swords, portions, and whatnot. The students regard him as the strongest student and call him and the Great, shooting his reputation up. He even wins a Primordial Chaos Alloy Brick from the Lucky Draw awarded by the system for completing the quest. Things are looking up for an Lin. One month after the Battle of Freedom, the Eldest Elder announces to the school that the seal of the demon-suppressing pagoda has gotten damaged in the mortal world, causing the Demon King's escape. 
The school will send three talented Year 1 students and Lin, Chang, and Xiolin to the mortal world to repair the damage and keep things at bay. Rumors spread that Wei Ju was originally picked as one of the messengers, but since the Battle of Freedom he was replaced by An Lin. The students applaud them while the eldest elder appoints An Lin as the trio's leader. All the cheering and recognition make Wei Ju's blood boil with vengeance. Before leaving, An Lin and his friends organize a fair, and Lin promises to bring whatever students desire from the mortal world if they pay with spiritual stones. Lu also announces that she and him are opening a non-magic gaming club where members simply play multiplayer games without using any sort of cultivation. Tons of students line up for his business and Lu's gaming club. The two celebrate their success together, with Lu giving in one of her rings, which contains 10,000 spiritual stones. Kaisailin watches from a distance with jealousy, and Wei Ji cries with frustration over his popularity. This and his newfound popularity unlock the crybaby skill and almighty skill in N. The numerology teacher warns Xiolin that many life-threatening dangers await in Lin in the mortal world. She approaches the portal that will take them to the mortal world with his haunting words still in her mind. Once in Lin walks towards the portal, a bunch of long tentacle-like arms grab him and pull him into the portal. Xiolin manages to grab hold of one of the arms and clings to him while they are whisked away by the portal. Cheng follows behind them as well. The two shoot out of the portal and start free-falling towards the ground in the mortal world from a height of 3,000 feet and tries to break the fall by summoning Earth Lotus. At the same time as their descent, a flower gains self-awareness and immortality after basking in the sun for 100 years. She celebrates as her body transforms into a beautiful spirit, but is tragically cut short when an Lin and Saolin run into her while falling to the ground, causing her spirit to get absorbed. Once they recover, and Lin notices a flower on top of his head. She sobs over her lost body gifted by the sun. After talking to the flower, Cheng understands her situation and explains it to the others. They promise to help her bring her back her spirit body, and that she should live in Enlin's body for the time being. With that, the flower and Enlin make peace. Not much time passes until a large aircraft comes and looms over them. They receive a cold welcome from a member of the Cultivation Investigator Alliance, Liling Tian. She and Xiolin get into a fight over Enlin's skills. Things only calm down when Cheng smooth talks Lian Ling. Lian Ling takes the three to headquarters, where tensions remain high. There they meet Yuan, the president of the Cultivation Investigator Alliance and seven of the highest-ranking members in the Alliance. And Lin asks when they get to hunt down the Demon King, to which the Alliance members laugh and say they've already caught him and patched up the pagoda. Mr. Tian says they've only been brought to the HQ so they can be returned to the spiritual world. Taken aback by this, Cheng argues that they were brought here to help the mortal world and haven't received any kindness in return. Mr. Tian scoffs, saying they had asked for help from the spiritual world for weeks to take down the Demon King, and no help arrived. Now that the mortal world has taken care of the biggest threats, the spiritual world has sent a group of weak cultivators to seem friendly. The President Yuan tells them to send a message back to the spiritual world that the affairs of the mortal world will be entirely taken care of by mortals themselves. Cheng asks to duel Mr. Tian, and if he wins, the three get to help the Alliance with their other missions, and steps in and takes Cheng's place. He goes to attack Mr. Tian, but Lian Ling attacks him from the back to defend her father, and in Lian Ling fight, but he emerges victorious. He diverts his attention to Mr. Tang with an all-out attack, and Mr. Tang starts charging up a solid defense, before they collide and cast his crybaby skill on Tian, making him break into tears and drop his defense. Seeing Mr. Tian in a losing position, Yuan rushes in to absorb and Lin's attack. Impressed by his abilities, the Alliance members welcome him and his group. They each heave it to red alert. It seems the Blood Cult and Demon Cult have teamed up to cause chaos, and Lin and Lion Ling are sent to investigate the fourth battlefield and report back the enemy's strength and numbers. They have to be careful of the Demon Cult's soul-devouring mist, which is poisonous. Lion Ling uses her powers to detect the enemies in their surroundings like a radar and sends a report back to HQ that there are two SNL enemies in the area. Meanwhile, and Lin focuses on the soul devouring mist approaching them. Upon the spirit's advice, he uses his Earth Lotus Divine Art as a shield against the mist's toxicity and walks in. He comes out to report that the mist fumbled her readings and that there are actually four SNLs. He bought them time to call in more reinforcements by casting the crybaby technique on them. Meanwhile, at HQ, they are still under the impression that two SNL enemies are in the fourth battlefield. Fagolin, remembering the numerology teacher's ominous words, begs to be sent to the same area. Xiolin and Cheng fight the higher-level Alliance members who wish to go instead and force their way into the teleportation chamber. After they leave, the HQ gets alerts from multiple battlefields about an enemy of unknown level, 
The third battlefield sends a picture which sends a chill down the president's spine. Realizing that black feathers have descended on the mortal realm, she commands her members to inform the spiritual world of their status and to concentrate their manpower on the third battlefield. However, before they can make their next move, the HQ is invaded by a large group of demon cult disciples who take all of them down. At the fourth battlefield, and Lin is glad to be reunited with Xiaolin and Chang. This is cut short when Lian Ling receives a notification that they have lost all contact with the main base. This can only mean one thing, something terribly wrong has happened. Losing all hope, Lian Ling tells the three to go back to the spiritual world since they shouldn't lose their lives for the mortal realm's affairs. However, they stay with her in her time of mean and decide to win at least the fourth battlefield. Out of nowhere, and Lin is snatched up by demons. Despite all their efforts, he is absorbed into a portal that leads him to the demon cult's base. The base has a large, circular platform with ten pillars along the edges. The Alliance members from the HQ were all brought here unconscious and hung on the pillars with chains made of iron. The surroundings are made of red, swirling clouds beyond which nothing is visible. One of the black feathered demons, a pink-haired woman with black wings, traps in Lin in a giant dark sphere. The spirit forces in Lin awake within the sphere and offers a cheat code to let him out of the sphere. It tells him to use the ring Lu gave him during the fair and the help he needs will come. He gets into a superhero pose with one hand raised up and yells out, Boy of Light, transform. Rays of blinding light circle the ring and a portal opens up from which a hand arises and touches in's hand. The ring summoned Lu, who emerges from the portal, bursts the sphere apart and descends to the ground within Lin in her arms. She then speeds into the fourth battlefield through the portal and effortlessly slashes down all the enemies and brings Lianling, Sayolin, and Cheng into the demon base before it closes. The pink-haired black feather demon confronts all of them. Lu recognizes her as the third queen in the black feathers, Dark Knight, let's call her Pink. Wasting no time, Pink uses a portal to bring her hand near Lu and cast a death curse. But the immortal flower pops out of an Lin's head and launches its photosynthesis spell to melt her hand away. Now that things are serious, Lu drops an Lin from the bridal carry and gets ready to fight. She dashes toward Pink and slices one of her wings off with her light sword. This reassures her that Pink will not be using her powers to the full extent of the regeneration level, as the mortal world will not be able to handle it and crumble into a calamity. With these conditions, Lu believes they can defeat her if they fight together. Pink reveals her true intentions at this point, claiming that her god commanded her to come to the mortal realm to kill one man and Lin. She uses the ten captured SNL Alliance members as sacrifices to draw their energy out and summon the evil vanquishing sword, a divine level weapon. Everyone's weapons quiver in the presence of it. She then summons another divine weapon, level destroying nail that bolts toward an Lin and pierces his left palm, teleporting him next to her upon impact. Immediately, she stabs his other palm with the divine sword, causing cracks to open up and spread throughout his arm, neck, and face. This causes him to faint. The others charge toward her all at once, but something causes them to get pulled to the ground and collapse on the floor. This is because she summons a third divine weapon, the Heavily Star Scourge Disc, which releases many small discs that form a small dome on top of the demon base. Summoning the three weapons together sucks out all her power, and she falls to the ground as well. However, she is glad that her mission is completed. In one day, enough energy will be released from the three weapons to even destroy stars, effectively killing a Lin. Lu and the others demand to know why so much effort is being put into killing their friend and Lin off. Pink doesn't know herself, all she was ordered to do is to erase him as he does not belong in this world. Heavy rain and lightning come down over them, and a screen flashes in front of Lin Lin's face. It gives him the option to exchange one-fifth of his life for absolute power. Only wishing to save his friends' lives, he chooses yes, but a small fairy appears out of nowhere and presses no instead. The cracks in his body spread all over and in Lin's consciousness transports into this sea of energy, a separate world within his soul. In it, he sees a giant form of the system's spirit. Huge chains and thick, black slime cover it completely, slowly severing the connection between in Lin and the system. The spirit apologizes, saying that the attack is actually meant for it and not in. A hole forms at the front of the spirit and the fairy that we saw earlier is flung out of it. He tries to save her from the muck, but she gets up and yells at him to stay where he is. If he comes any closer, he will be stuck in the calamity as well. A lightning bolt strikes her, causing her to scream in pain. He runs toward her instinctively, and she yells at him not to again. She explains that she is Tina and belongs to another world, a world in which she had lost him. In the near future, the world faces a heavenly calamity that causes Enlin to lose his life. Tina came back to this world to try and change fate so that they can live together. 
The master cultivator that gave him the system and letter of recommendation is Tina's grandfather and Tino was the system's spirit all along, guiding him in the spiritual world and helping him defeat his enemies. However, the more she influences the world, the more unwelcome she is here. Her direct intervention to stop him from exchanging one-fifth of his life means her destiny of being eliminated from this world is sealed. And Lin recalls his memories and realizes that it was her who was saving him the entire time, but his memories were somehow altered to forget it. Tian extracts the last of her power to give to him so that he can get rid of the dome formation and save his friends. This would cause Tian to disappear from this world and for everybody, including and Lin, to forget about her. And Lin runs toward her despite her warnings and hugs her tight, begging her not to go. He raises his hand to use the heaven-splitting finger to protect them from the Calamity's attacks. And Lin wakes up in the base and sees all his friends unconscious. He is relieved to see Tina still there and the Calamity gone. The discs from the Heavenly Star Scourge discs start reactivating. Tina says that as long as she and this world, the Calamities will keep coming. And Lin still doesn't want to lose hope. She asks him why he is working so hard to do something that is impossible. To which he replies that he is sad to have not known that the spirit was Tina staying by his side this whole time. He must repay her no matter what. After saying that, tears start pouring out of his eyes. Tina wipes his tears when she sees part of her arm start to fade, realizing her time is coming to an end. She tells him they should smile when saying goodbye, and that he can cry when they meet again. Then they act as spirit and user for one last time to destroy the formation together. And Lin gets up and the spirit tells him to use the almighty technique to bring the divine weapons to his side. With them under control, the spirit tells him to use the level-destroying nail, a weapon used to destroy formations. He uses his spiritual eyes to find the weak spots in the formation and makes the nail destroy them, causing the entire formation to disappear. For the final step, he uses the divine sword to destroy the calamity with Tina. A giant beam of light shoots toward the angry storm cloud. Soon the clouds break and the sky clears, ending the calamity. Tenen appears once more and gives him one last mission as his spirit. He must find her in the kingdom of spirits in this timeline so that they can meet again. And Lin promises to complete the mission. They bid goodbye and Tina disappears from the mortal realm. With the calamity ended and the demons defeated, the world returns to its state of order. All the cultivators, including the captured alliance members, are safe and sound. Pink, I mean Dark Knight is taken into custody by the Heavenly Alliance for questioning. Everybody in the school loves and respects and Lin, showering him with many rewards when he returns to the spiritual realm. The Alliance members from the mortal world remain friends within Lin, Cheng, and Xiolin, showing a return to harmony and alliance between the two worlds. He spends his time training with the three divine weapons and working with the new system without the spirit, all so that he can be strong enough to venture into the kingdom of spirits and find Tina.